the Seahawks entered the 2022 NFL draft with somehow an even greater need at the cornerback position than in 2021. DJ Reed, they let walk in the offseason. He got paid by the New York Jets. And the promise of rookie Trey Brown was shortened by a serious knee injury. It's easy to forget, but hurting the patella tendon was once regarded as a career ender. While Seattle re-signed Sidney Jones to play on the left side, the right side is very much an unknown. It therefore makes sense they exited the draft with two cornerback selections. This video, as you can see from the thumbnail, is going to be looking at Tariq Woolen. Woolen's profile is immediately more glitzy, harking back to the kind of long cornerback mold where Seattle went for ages without taking a cornerback with arms shorter than 32 inches. Woolen easily clears that mark with 33 and 5 eighth of an inch long arms at 6 foot 4 and an eighth of an inch tall, 205 pounds. He's tall, he's long, he's big. In terms of his athletic gifts in the drills, he was absolutely ludicrous. His 4 to 6 seconds 40 yard dash was the 99th percentile and his 1.49 seconds 10 yard split 92nd percentile, his 42 inch vertical jump at 97th percentile among cornerbacks drafted per mock draftable. Looking at the work of Kent Lee Platt at MathBomb on Twitter and his RAS score, that's relative athletic score, really does emphasize Woolen's special nature, being the 60th most athletic cornerback out of the 2001 cornerbacks on Lee Platt's database. While Woolen's agility scores were less special, a 7.1 seconds three cone time, given his height, isn't as bad as it may seem. Looking at the RAS comps for Woolen as a cornerback, raises talented names like Jalen Ramsey and Marshawn Lattimore, guys who were kind of at the top of the position in the NFL and went very early in the NFL draft, first round picks. But it also throws up names like Jamal Dean, a third round pick in the 2019 draft to the Buccaneers, and Ifetu Melifonru, who also is a third round pick of the Lions. Now, Melifonru is a bit too early to judge his career, but he went through some struggles. And Dean has really taken off in Todd Bowles' defense. Woolen, of course, was drafted in the fifth round by the Seahawks, at pick 10 overall. Now that speaks to his production and his tape in college being less good. If we start with the data, the Sports Info Solutions NFL Draft website shows Woolen's 70 total points rating per play, ranking 41st among the cornerbacks, his 72 total points rating per coverage snap, ranking 35th, and his 0.0.9 EPA per target in 31st. When lined up in press, and Seattle will want Woolen to press given his length and the potential that he has in this area. Woolen also struggled. He played press 28% of the time, so the 13th most, trying to use his length, but he allowed 0.3 coverage total points per game in press, which that's an improvement on the overall, right? But it's still only tied for 24th amongst the cornerback draft class. Now, this all makes sense given Woolen's a converted wide receiver, making the switch in 2019, which was his second year. After his first three games of his red shirt sophomore season, he made that switch. He only got action at cornerback in his red shirt junior year, 2020, and then his red shirt senior year, 2021. Now, as we get to the tape, we're going to be focusing on that 2021 season, given it's only really fair that, you know, that's when Woolen's kind of starting to put it together technique-wise given the transition. We're also going to be looking at games with a high level of competition. The Roadrunners, they played in the Conference USA, somewhere you're not going to get many high quality matchups. So we're, we're going to be looking at Western Kentucky, who was like the second best team in that conference, who had Bailey Zappi at quarterback, who the Patriots took in the fourth round this year, and who reached the championship game against UTSA. The Hilltoppers also have a, a receiving group who may well get drafted coming out next year as red shirt seniors or seniors and then we'll finish with a look at the 2022 senior bowl where woolen faced some of the best receivers in this draft class so here's the all 22 unsurprisingly woolen when playing press coverage was able to cause receivers problems when he got his hands on not many cornerbacks in college are as lengthy as woolen in this clip on third and one he gets a wide outside release kicks outside with it because the receiver is leaving his frame, gets his hands on. It's good disruption. He cuts off. He's over the top of the route. This translates. Here we have another third and ten, this time a high red zone shot play. Woolen once more gets this wide outside release. He's able to kick outside. There's a few issues with how he deals with this stutter, but getting his hands on, being over the top in that square position enables him to really 
squeeze the red line, reduce the space for any kind of shot throw to the sideline here. Basically pushes the receiver off the field. Now we have Woolen step with his inside foot. Receiver releases through his corn slightly inside. Woolen gets his two hands on. He's not lunging. He doesn't need to lunge because his arms are 30, over 33 inches long. But his feet are largely under control with his little underneath in breaking route and he's able to kind of transition from two to one uh, and break with the route now we have the championship game woolen bottom of the screen another step with his inside foot but it's a wide outside release this is a well placed one arm grab and you can see how strong that hand is to transition with it to turn and run he hand fights throughout the route and he has the speed to stay in phase with the receiver we'll get to some of the issues with this technique approach but for now focus on the positives which are present here he's right there if the quarterback decides to try and thread this in vertically to his receiver now to senior bowl action and woolen using a quick jam technique he's able to shock the receiver at the come back to balance with the receiver flattened on the slant route and the timing of the patterns completely disrupted with woolen transitioning in phase after the release here we have what looks like another quick jam technique through the blurry lens woolen getting his hands on and disrupting the receiver forcing him to run around him because of how he's quick jammed his hips are open to the outside release go route the way he's able to reset his hands here and stay on top and square and cut off the re release is very very nice and that is very Seattle-like. He stays over the top of the route and squeezes it beautifully. You actually get Bazali from this, mainly because of how long Woolen's arms are. You get a transition which is very much like how Seattle step kicks with their corners, even if it isn't that. Now finally, let's get to a rep where Woolen undoubtedly wins the rep, but it takes us towards his issues and his rawness in press technique and the kind of project Seattle has on their hands in this area. You may have noticed by now he's big on using his inside foot. Even though he's aligning with inside leverage, he uses his inside foot as his pivot foot or his read foot and likes to take uh, steps with that first. And so against this route, he get, puts him in a strong inside position with the outside release. Pretty shoddy route, but as the receiver then breaks back or tries to break back across Woolen's face, he's right there to get to get back onto the route and contest the catch point. You wish it actually caught the ball or swatted it incomplete, but he won this rep from a leverage standpoint. Also a nice sign of his agility here flipping back with this. So let's get to the why this is an issue using your inside foot like this. And there's a variety of reasons that uh, the Roadrunners coaching staff may have taught Woolen to use these techniques. But Seattle will not be asking him to do this. Seattle will be asking him to use step kick press technique, which I'll get into a bit of here. They will likely allow him to use an outside read step first to build comfort in. And, and again, I'll explain that. So Woolen, when he's aligning on the, the inside eye of the receiver and then reading with his inside foot, is almost put in a situation where it's like two man, where you'd play man coverage underneath, but you'd have a half safety over the top of you protecting your red line and you're, you over the top. It's also necessary to play this inside in two-man coverage because you have no inside coverage help. However, Woolen's using this kind of inside stepping with the inside alignment, even when he doesn't have safety help over the top. So he's responsible for protecting the red line. He's responsible for not giving up the deep. The result is he ended up low and inside on a lot of routes. Now, it could well be that the bet they were betting that Woolen would end up winning the foot race. You see here, the receiver gives him a little inside stem before breaking outside on the, the fade route. Woolen steps with his inside foot forward and then transitions back to the route outside. He's out of phase in the sense that he's, he's on the low hip. He's not over the top and square which Seattle, they want their corners to cut the guy off, stay over the top and square, and the ball on the third and six is caught back shoulder. Here we go again, where Woolen's first step is with his inside leg. This receiver is just using a classic kind of tempoed, almost walk it out, outside release. Because his first steps are with his inside foot, Woolen is playing behind on the outside release. He has extra ground to make. Only a quarter of his body essentially is, is taking away the path to the outside and it's very difficult even for his arm length to get hands on he's only able to get a slight brushing of his two hands if he steps with his outside waits for the receiver to declare but is taking step replace step replace step replace kind of steps at the line of scrimmage he's able to cut this off better and play two to one to none with the arms in much better leveraged position instead you see the kind of foot race he gets in with this minimal contact and kind of disadvantage so then down in mobile at the senior bowl you kind of saw how this really impacted Wood against the stiffer competition. This is Velas Jones, who is an old receiver. I think he's 25. And the Bears took him in the 
the third round of the draft. You can see Woolen heavily step with the inside. Jones is tempoing forwards, resetting the line of scrimmage to run this outside release comeback. So Woolen's really taken away the inside here, but he's opened the gate to the outside and he's not in a body position to obstruct it. He's only able to get a brief snatching one arm off arm on at the line of scrimmage, but he's also got a lot of space out on the perimeter here. And you can see how that leaves him in a catch up mode where he's thinking, I really need to get on top of this go ball now because I'm, I'm out of phase. I have to recover from this trail position to get back in phase. At which point Jones slams on the brakes, his timing's off at the quarterback. Woolen's absolutely roasted. Here's him battling with Jones again. This is sim similar senior ball rep to what we saw before on the inside route better route from Jones here. I like how Woolen takes a few steps backwards with this, with Jones sort of releasing through his core. He really shouldn't be afraid to, to put his two arms out though. And the Seahawks would coach that if the guy's going to release through your core, they want you to put your two arms out there, strike the guy once your feet are right. But because Jones steps with his inside foot, because he's using his inside foot as his pivot kind of deal, he ends up camping on the inside. And so in this situation with this route, that's a big deal. He, he cuts it off. There's absolutely no room for the football. However, Jones, I imagine, was pretty frustrated about this. And the very next play shows the exact issue with this approach. And the Seahawks have one absolute, they stress for their cornerback, do not give up the deep ball. Even if you're aligned in press coverage with that inside leverage that the Seahawks will code, they do not want to give up the deep ball. This is predominantly in their cover three and cover one world, their middle field close world, where they have a single high middle field safety, but the cornerback is responsible then, therefore, for the deep sideline throws. The reason they coach an outside read step is to give the guys, one, a way of syncing up the timing and being patient at the line the scrimmage and not overstepping over dancing with a receiver giving a bit of shake and bake just playing patient with the feet waiting for the receiver to release from the frame but two is to protect against outside release go balls because if you're stepping with the outside foot it helps you better cut off the outside go balls the, the vertical route you can see here how that stepping with the outside foot just a little six inch lateral or even slightly backward step to keep the hips open would help. Instead, he steps with his inside foot and he hasn't cut off with his body position. It's a wide outside release, so he's probably thinking at this point, I need to kick and get outside. But because he's so playing so much catch up, because he's so far to the inside of Jones, but at this point, he's essentially left guessing. And so Jones gets a completely clean release where he's not even having really to run around Woolen. Woolen's given up the red line completely. And then it becomes a foot race where not only is Woolen racing Jones, and he would win that race, but Jones is more like that NFL speed of... But Woolen is also racing all this space to the sideline too. He's racing the fact that he's lost the red line. And so there's the space to the numbers, the red line, and the sideline. And the results are touched. Here we have an, an, a rep against, against a burner in... In Jalen Tolbert, who went in the third round to the Cowboys. This looks more like a quick jam rep from Woolen, and he was tr he was trying to play around with his technique as he got beat with his primary inside step kind of move. You can see he's lost the rep immediately. As soon as the receiver's gone outside, he's unable to reset at this point, and he's roasted on the outside, even though he's able to recover somewhat with his speed and also the fact that, you know, quarterback timing's not quite there. He can't make a play on the football in the air, and... The ball's caught kind of back shoulder-ish because also Woolen's desperately trying to catch up and so receiver can throw on the brakes somewhat, adjust to the ball mid-flight, whereas the DB ain't going to get his head round as capably. Here's a bit more of the kind of compensation I spoke about with, with uh, Woolen getting sort of beat up using his primary. You can see he still steps with his inside foot first, but then he's trying to almost mirror step outside. Uh, he just oversteps to the outside here. He's able to get the two hands, but he, realistically, he's out of phase. He gets stacked at the top of the route. He commits uh, defensive pass interference. Seattle coaches a mirror step. It's just, again, especially to their more advanced corners, and they more, encourage it more for the smaller guys. You just see here how raw... Woolen is trying to use this. You can see here as well, Woolen gets left on his in, out on his outside foot, weight distribution wise. Looks again like he's trying to use more of a mirror stepping sort of outside emphasis. And he gets stacked again on the same root concept. Playing in off coverage with his butt to the sideline in kind of midpoint zone deals or even in certain cover two areas. You can really see Woolen's burst and elements of his three cone time 
an agility pop up too. There's parts which are raw, but then there's also parts which show up, show his receiver background and his intelligence in on play. The way he tops this post route after opening into the bail position is very, very efficient movement skills. He's right in line from outside leverage. It's very, very difficult for a cornerback to uh, top a post route like this. I also think he notices that the two receiver runs are post, and I think he's cognizant of uh, the double post concept that's at play here, what the offense is trying to do. But this is hyper-efficient, this step and then step to really stay on top of the post route maintain vision through to the quarterback now he gets uh unlucky with how the play breaks down but look how efficient he is even driving on the the curled up nature of it with the with the play breaking down he's right there that's that's some agility for a big guy and burst okay the ball gets caught but that's, that's an unfortunate uh aspect where he, he could do with some help underneath in terms of the movement skills this translates seattle they play a lot of uh midpoint uh cover three even in their shifting worlds two or more receivers cornerback has to overlap to number two the the slot receiver up the seam woolen shows he can do this also shows like this applies you know if you're on the back side of cover three you've got a single receiver and you're and you get a deep dig trying to break on that kind of backside dig route here we have this dig thing kind of showing up stick his foot in the ground recognizes again i think the concept here at play where you got three on the bender he gets this dig route you can see it all play out from his eyes footwork could be cleaned up slightly here but it's a you can see the burst out the break the way he's sort of zooms into it here this is that one to two read i was mentioning his um one switch releases really with the number two receiver woolen's easily able to kind of overlap process that flip his hips and run he's in phase with the the vertical route you can see his speed accelerating. Seems like he's got a lot more in the tank, really. This is playing in an outside underneath the zone. He's not. He's got two routes in his zone, and it's in a clear pass first, end of half situation. But he's able to close on this. You can see the burst once he sort of sticks that foot in the ground, almost like a T-step. He makes the, the throw tight and it falls incomplete. Now back to Mobile and the 2022 Senior Bowl footage. This is another very difficult route to cover when they get offenses getting these condensed split formations. Think about the Rams think about what the Seahawks may be doing a bit more of this year what we expected Shane Waldron to bring for a cornerback to top a post route from this is very difficult Woolen kind of recognizes the route and ends up running the route for the receiver he maintained his outside over the top leverage and again nice footwork to cut with the receiver's cuts this here I'm not sure how Woolen missed the football rainy day a bit weird the strong hook defender in the cover three uh, took the cheese and went missing it's in really Woolen's play to make given how far the route bends back inside but you, again you can see his acceleration with his butt to the sideline and sticking his foot in the ground on the route inside in that kind of midpoint technique his tempoing of certain stuff could be brushed up he almost has two speeds he can't really tempo when he's in his crossover run it's it's a bit awkward looking but here he's still in phase of the route the res outside receiver tries to get uh, behind him when he's playing his cover three midpoint but he's able to squeeze it turn and look for it stay in phase on it his traits are obvious in cover two play as well you can see here how he's trying to obscure the receiver from releasing outside to buy his deep half safety time then plays deep to short on it still a bit raw though in the, in how he lets the receiver sort of run through his core which shouldn't be happening he could get arms on and then flip back sort of oversteps outside this is an excellent job of holding off that deep root outside getting his hand on but understanding that the ball's coming out recognizing the third and ten down a distance and the cover two kind of beta this could even be a hyper uh, specific play which i should have logged in the butt to sideline segment where he's super switched on to the down and distance and it's actually middle field closed but he's recognizing the offensive concept right he's seeing this kind of sale route he's understanding that his guy's not getting the football and making the play out there because it looks like the rest of the defense is in cover one or it could just have been a bust but anyway very switched on and kind of a cover two style break from woolen at least this i've included because it is similar to how seattle would step replace step replace uh, which they do in cover two when they're pressed up which they do also out of their middle field close stuff as i've said with inside level you can see how woolen's comfortable doing it like it would be very i'm very excited to see it play out in the preseason here because he's outside leverage it's kind of overstepping to the outside that's just the style that that utsa played with he's able to work back with the outside release slant route nicely and is in phase this is a 
a real questionable pass interference call. And finally, we have nice cover two read down at the goal line, where in the condensed space, his number one doesn't really give him a real route. He's held it off enough, but it's still not a real route. It's right to the sideline. He sees the ball come out, bang, nice break. That translates good physicality, good putting foot in the ground and working back to it quickly. Woolen's general rawness shows up in other things too. Here we have a cover zero scooch. Now Seattle uses a similar kind of scooch technique. Woolen's pushing off his inside foot with the inside leverage, having his outside foot up to keep his hips open for the fade route. He's patient with the stutter here and is well on top of the phase, beautifully in phase um, textbook end of the scooch work. It's also nice at the, at the end how he meets the push up attempt for the fade he prevents himself getting boxed out I'm sure there's a lot of good pulling going on with the receivers pushing he's just a tad raw in how he gets off the line you can brush up the efficiency of this here we have pretty crazy movement skills as well cover one inside leverage off scooch the routes run slightly deeper than i think he expected but he is all over this comeback route with burst and and ability to even though he's opened up to break sharply with the the comeback route he's he's right in phase of this able to if the ball were to be thrown here contest at the catch point this is the overstepping showing up again but the the issue we'll focus on is at the catch point where woolen goes for the undercut and completely misses the football just misjudges the the flight of it um and and how he plays it his tracking of the football it is an issue to me not just with getting his head around and we highlighted really why that's difficult if you're out of phase you lack the confidence to do that with the the deep vertical roots with your back to the ball anyway but also when he's in a position where he can see the football so butt to sideline or in this case when he's going for the undercut he just doesn't seem to track the football very well which may explain why he uh, made the switch from wide receiver in the first place why the Roadrunners coaching staff decided to move him. Here we've got some weird kind of drop eight coverage going on where the oversteppy style is more from what I saw of the UTSA defense. It's more like what they're doing, like cover two. So I think that technique choice is taught or coached. The walk it out release style of release is something that he'll see a lot of in the NFL. Like heck, even Tyler Lockett in training camp is going to give him this kind of stuff and his technique plan just it's not a quick deal with it at the moment so he'll really have to learn how to deal with it see how he gets twisted around here this is another example of going for the undercut where he doesn't i don't understand i suppose he's desperately trying to get back in phase with the receiver but the tracking of the ball can be somewhat quick but his length foot catch points is a is a thing you can see here he's a tall obstacle he meets the red zone push-off attempt well. Whatever you want to say about the technique at the line of scrimmage. And his long arm gets that ball out incomplete. A big element to all of this is Woolen's character. You know, will he have that competitive drive to improve on his technique, to continue improving where he's always been the best athlete. Uh, he's clearly got that receiving brain in terms of recognizing patterns out on the field. So in, in that sense, cornerback, especially against the level of competition, had easy elements to it. But in the NFL, now he's been drafted, will we have the competitive drive and also the, the coachable nature to improve on his game and make the technique improvements, which are a project at this point, I will be frank, they're a project and are required for him to hang on at the NFL level. Now, Seattle will have done interviews to gauge this. They'll have spoke to him at the Senior Bowl. His on-tape competitiveness is, a, is an indicator for us the people who are not privy to interviews of Woolen. And it was patchy for me. Here we have the defense playing two man. The ball is pops out of the quarterback into the flat. And I love how that slot is busy celebrating, right? But Woolen sees the ball. As Pete Carroll says, it's all about the ball. And he runs it back there. He doesn't know if that's a fumble or not. And the slot sure as heck doesn't. The slot didn't see it. He was in trail position. But Woolen goes and gets that football and runs it all the way back. So that is a big tick for the competitive stuff. Now let's get to his last game in uh, UTSA colors. Here we have a tough rep against a fake screen concept where the fake stalk blocker beats Woolen deep. Stuff like that happens. It's football. His drive to get back and try and recover on the play is superb. I thought here we were going to get a DK Metcalf, Buddha Baker style moment. What I'm puzzled by is why around the 10 to end zone line, Woolen didn't try a tackle. Now, it could well be there's a lack of confidence in technique here. It's an unusual situation to be in the chase down position like this, but the, he's literally touching the guy as he walks in. I'm not sure why he didn't attempt something, like a dive, anything. 
Like, it, it, it would have looked better than that. Next, and this comes after the, play, the cover two play where he knocked the ball loose, we have this, where the game's a lot later and it's it's no longer 0-0 zero, zero early in the game. It's a fourth and six. The Hilltoppers are down 42-13. For, to 13. So UTSA has won the game, right? They've won the championship. Woohoo. But for what? It's your last game. Surely Woolen would want to go out on a high. He's already broken on the, the out route. So they try the other cover two beater, which is like double slants, basically. And so the slants caught underneath, which, you know, that's tough. It's fourth and six. Maybe Woolen could play tighter is what it is good beater. But his break is very lackluster. And then his tackling attempt is eh. We've just seen him come down and smack the heck out of the out route. Surely he could have stuck his foot in the ground and, and gone for this one, put his body on the line. So as I said, with the competitiveness and Woolen's character, and so I'm sure he's a, he's a very nice chap, but in terms of his football character, the Seahawks will have a much better indication of, of what Woolen is like. The reason he fell to the fifth round is largely because of how raw he is. Maybe there's stuff there that, you know, teams didn't like from a, a coaching standpoint. Maybe there isn't. We, we do not know. What I do know is... Seattle's got themselves a very talented athlete who clearly has benefited from his receiver experience and knows how to use his athletic tools in off coverage. If Woolen can learn Seattle's ways of step kick press technique, using the outside read step to protect against the fade, he is going to be a problem. That is easier said than done. We should not expect too much from Woolen in year one on defense. He's, he's a project in that sense. The preseason will be full of growing pains, but it will be exciting to see him learn the new skills and see him harness those to be the best player he can be because his ceiling is absolutely crazy. In a best case scenario by year three, he's a guy who is locking down your left side. He's your cornerback number one. However, there's so many variables, so many intangibles that goes into that. For now, please do like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, retweet the tweet on Twitter, follow me if you don't already, and I appreciate all of you.